Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 91 of 2019, appointing Ambassador Hisham Mohammed Al Jaida as the Kingdom of Bahrain's Ambassador to Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to Egypt. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakir Palace the first Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Serbia, Iva Sad Dacic, who conveyed to His Majesty the King the greetings of the Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic and his wishes of progress and prosperity to the Kingdom. His Majesty the King also thanked the guest and asked him to convey his greetings to the Serbian President and his wishes of further advancement and progress to Serbia. His Majesty here at the bilateral relations between Bahrain and Serbia and the development they achieved in all fields. His Majesty welcomed the guest and reviewed with him the means of supporting and developing fraternal relations, noting that these visits reflect the mutual keenness and developing joint action and in bolstering cooperation. His Majesty asserted that, that Bahrain is keen on developing its relations with Serbia in all fields for the interest of the two countries, highlighting the opportunities and potentialities to bolster cooperation in various sectors. For his part, the Serbian Minister of Affairs expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for the generous hospitality and His Majesty's support to and keenness on bolstering relations with Serbia. He expressed aspiration for His Majesty's visit to Serbia to increase cooperation between the two countries. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakir Palace the former President of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Hadar Slajedic, and the accompanying delegation visiting the Kingdom. During the meeting, His Majesty welcomed them and here at the course of bilateral ties in the light of the joint keenness and interest in developing friendship ties and bilateral cooperation in all fields especially in the tourist fields, to meet the aspirations of the two countries and the two friendly people. His Majesty the King expressed appreciation for the role of the former Bosnian President in consolidating Bahraini-Bosnian relations, wishing the country, its leadership and people progress and prosperity. His Majesty expressed pride in Bahrain's deep-rooted history, which is a global model of fraternity, coexistence and tolerance among all religions, sects, and creeds in light of its keenness to bolster communication with all civilizations and cultures and promote the values of peace. For his part, the former Bosnian president expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the warm welcome and generous hospitality and His Majesty's efforts in developing bilateral relations. He healed the kingdom's development under the leadership of His Majesty and the tolerance and coexistence witnessed in the kingdom, commending its history that connects civilizations. He also wished for in progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakir Palace the High Representative for the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, Miguel Martinos, to greet His Majesty upon his visit to the Kingdom, and the Secretary General of the Federation of Foreign Communities in the Kingdom, Betsy Matheson. His Majesty the King welcomed the UN official and his visit to the Kingdom to attend the International Day for Tolerance, which is celebrated by the King Hamad Centre for Peaceful Coexistence. His Majesty the King affirmed the importance of this celebration, which reinforces the importance of tolerance and peaceful coexistence among people and the rejection of all forms of violence and hatred. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrain throughout its history has been able to consolidate coexistence between all religions and sects, and spread the values of peace, wishing the UN official a pleasant stay. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakir Palace the President and members of the King Hamad Global Centre for Peace for Coexistence Board of Trustees in cooperation with This is Bahrain on the occasion of the UN International Day for Tolerance in the presence of the former President of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Haris Salajadik and the High Representative for the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, Miguel Moratinos, to greet His Majesty on the occasion of the visit to the Kingdom.
عيسى الخليفة عاهل البلاد المفدى حفظكم الله ورعاكم وسدد على طريق الحق خطاكم شرف عظيم يا سيدي أن يتجدد اللقاء بجلالتكم مع احتفال مملكة البحرين أرض التسامح والتعايش السلمي باليوم العالمي للتسامح والذي يتزامن هذه السنة مع مناسبة تاريخية عزيزة على قلب كل بحريني هو الاحتفال بمرور مئة عام على التعليم النظامي لتأتي فعالياتنا تحت شعار نتسامح لنتعلم نتسامح لنعمل نتسامح لنكون سيدي يا صاحب الجلالة خطوات على الأرض سارت وهمم مع هامات السحاب تلاقت لتجسد رؤية جلالتكم الملكية السامية ما يميز عهدكم الميمون من أعلاء قل نظيره على وجه هذه البسيطة لمعاني الوئام ودعم ازدهار الأوطان وبناء السلام في سعي سام وجبار لجلالتكم لمحو مصطلحات الكراهية والعنف والتعصب من قاموس البشرية الكلمة السامية لحضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى الخليفة عاهل البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أيها الإخوة والأخوات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته then His Majesty the King delivered a speech in which he expressed pleasure in meeting the guests and welcomed the former Bosnian President. He expressed satisfaction with this Bahrain's activities inside and outside the Kingdom to promote Bahrain's experience and its tolerant, harmonious and flexible traditions in society. His Majesty expressed pride that the tolerance approach in the Kingdom was never a contrived approach or an emergency practice, but has always been a civilised behaviour and an inherent practice represented by peaceful coexistence between various religions. He added that Bahrain was and always will be home for pluralism and a centre for cultural convergence and religious and human coexistence. He stated that all will continue to spread the vision and message that calls for peace and brings people of different cultures and beliefs together. المتسامح والمتآلف والمرن وبناءها المدني العريق تحت ظل دولة القانون والمؤسسات المنظمة للحقوق والحامية للحريات واستطعنا من خلال هذه التجربة الرائدة ولله الحمد أن نحافظ على استقرار وطننا ووحدة شعبنا المعروف بتحضره وتمسكه بالقيم الإنسانية المرسخة للسلام والوئام والقائمة على احترام كافة الشعوب والأديان وهي قيم نابعة من جوهر شريعتنا الإسلامية السمحة حضور الكريم يحتفي العالم سنويا في هذا الشهر بأهمية التسامح في حياة الشعوب كوسيلة أساسية لتحقيق السلام ولبقاء الإنسانية واستمرار تحضرها ونفخر بالقول هنا بأننا لم نستشعر قط بأن نهج التسامح في بلدنا هو نهج مفتعل أو ممارسة طارئة بل نجده متجسدا كسلوك حضاري وممارسة متأصلة وتؤكد العديد من الشواهد المادية والمعنوية المتمثلة في التعايش السلمي بين أصحاب الديانات المختلفة وفي التوافق والانسجام بين الثقافات المتعددة وعبر مبادئ دستورية ثابتة وقوانين ملزمة تنبذ كافة أشكال الكراهية والعنف والتمييز 
ونجد بأن الانفتاح والتفاعل الحضاري لمجتمعنا قد أسهم بشكل كبير في تقوية قدرتنا على التواصل الإنساني فكانت البحرين ولا تزال موطن حاضن للتعددية ومركز للتلاقي الثقافي وللتعايش الديني والإنساني وسنستمر بعون الله وبمساندة الجميع في حمل ونشر رؤيتنا ورسالتنا الداعية للسلام وللتقريب بين الشعوب على اختلاف ثقافاتهم ومعتقداتهم إيمانا والتزاما منا بقيم المحبة والتسامح والتآلف والتي نادى لها وعمل بها رسولنا الكريم عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام والله ولي التوفيق والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The representative for the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, Miguel Moritinos, delivered the following speech. امتداد تاريخ طويل من الانفتاح والتنوع الثقافي وتمازج الأديان والحضارات يقف نموذجكم الفريد في حب الآخر وتقبل المختلف شامخا في عالم تتلاطم فيه أمواج من الانغلاق والإقصاء ونبذ التعددية ليكون نموذجكم يا صاحب الجلالة منارة والضاءة ترشد سفن الشعوب والمجتمعات التي تعاني من ويلات الحروب والصراعات إلى بر الأمان كلمة السيد ميغيل أنخيل موراتينوس ممثل الأمم المتحدة السامي لتحالف الحضارات King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, religious leaders, young people in this ceremony, Al Salam, Alokum, Wa Ramatu, Alawa, Wa Nakatu. It's a great honor, Your Majesty, to be in your audience in my capacity as UN official leading an organization whose mission and objective resonate with the remarkable work that Your Majesty has been leading here in the Kingdom of Bahrain for years, promoting tolerance, peaceful coexistence, and promoting cultural diversity in religious pluralism have been key priorities to the Kingdom of Bahrain thanks to Your Majesty, vision, and for working thinking approach. You recognize early on that the wealth of diverse religions, culture, and languages in the kingdom enriches the colorful mosaic of the Bahraini society. So you embrace it, nurture it, and strengthen its core. You saw that diversity informed human life in reaching it rather than threatening it. This is by rain, therefore. It is true demonstration of a way of life as it should be. This is no coincidence. The Kingdom of Bahrain is home to hundreds of mosques, more than a dozen churches, the oldest synagogue in the Gulf region, a Western Hindu, Sikh, and Buddhist temple. These houses of worship serve the multi-ethnic, multi-faith, and multicultural community that had lived in Bahrain decades ago. The Bahrain Declaration reflects the reality which is emphasized on freedom of religion, denouncing all forms of violent extremism, and acts of terror and hate speech leading to excitement. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence translates these principles into action. I see many synergy in the work we do at the United Nations Alliance of Civilization and the Center, particularly in the area of education and promoting interfaith dialogue. 
Your Majesty, Your Excellencies, two days ago we celebrate the International Day of Tolerance. The day is a reminder of the UN, the chart of the founding father of the United Nations, which referred to we the peoples of the United Nations, who are determined to practice tolerance and live together in peace with one another and neighbors. Those universal values are humanistic values inherent in all faiths. Is today complex world where conflicts are multiplying and people whose identity are defined by religion, culture, and ethnicity continue to be besieged by hatred. We indeed need to commit ourselves every day of this principle. A holistic approach is the way to respond to global challenges of this nature. Security measures will not suffice to stem up the scourge of terrorism, sectarianism, and racist rhetoric. We need to counter this false narrative with a true one that offers human solidarity and hope. Strengthening interface dialogue against bigotry and hate should guide our collective action. From the local community to cyberspace, the voices of inclusiveness, tolerance, and respect of the other must be heard. In preparation of the speech of today, Your Majesty, I draw inspiration for Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Magna Carta of all humankind, which states, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. All the prophet and religion messengers throughout history have preached a similar message of peace, love, and tolerance. For instance, the dignity of human being in Islam derived from our common humanity, regardless of race, creed, color, or gender. Islam viewed the world as a single family with global citizenship, the basis for cooperation and peaceful coexistence. Islam is a faith of tolerance, a faith of humanism that is important to recognize when we talk about Islam today. I quote from the Holy Quran, Surat al Huriyat. O mankind, we created you from a single pair of a male and a female and made you into nation and tribe that they may know each other. And these values are not limited to the scripture of these three monotheistic religions. They are cherished by all the world major religion and faith. Yet, in all corners of the world, we see an erosion of these universal values and growing social and cultural divides where tribalism, ethnic violence, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, xenophobia, hate speech, ultranationalism are in full swing. These atrocities continue to shock the conscience of humanity. This brings me to the United Nations Plan of Action to Safeguard Religious Site, which was my offer developed and was launched by UN Secretary General on 12 September. The plan came in response to the successful attack on religious sites in New Zealand, Sri Lanka, the US, and elsewhere. It was conceived as an action-oriented framework for action with suggested recommendations to support the state and relevant stakeholders in the effort to prevent possible attacks against religious sites and to be better prepared to safeguard religious sites and worshippers. A great emphasis is placed on the role of religious leaders and faith faith organization in the prevention segment of the plan. Given back Rain's successful model of peaceful coexistence, I hope that we can work together through the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence to take this plan forward to the implementation phase, particularly in the area of interface education and promotion of freedom of religion and belief. Your Majesty, Excellency, Distinguished Guest, the United Nations Alliance of Civilization derived and embraced the motto, Many Culture, One Humanity. We work to promote intercultural, interreligious dialogue as a viable tool to achieve this goal. I be all truly believe and work for fulfilling the motto. We will succeed in transitioning from tolerance to a mobile human virtue, its acceptance and respect of the other as a noble human act. Let me conclude 
by quoting the Bible. Love your neighbor and yourself. No commandment is greater than this. Mark 1 to 9. And from the Torah, Talmud Shabbat 31. Uh, what is hateful to you, do not do, do to another. That is the whole Torah. With these inspiring words, I conclude my speech. I truly thank your majesty for your gracious welcome to me and your beautiful country. I also thank the King Hamad Global Center for Peace Cooperation to this hospitality. Thank you very much. Sayyidi Sahib al Jalala, Mashruhukum al Islahi, Azimun bimurtakazate, Sabikun li Asre, Sarmadiyun birisalati il insaniyatin nabila, Hamiltum ala atikikum, Mohammed Jisam, fi Sabila ayam al Khairu wa Salam, Jami aban il Bashar, Litakunu ayadakum Allah, Khairam ayumathil al Islam bita alimi his Samha, while Ummat al Arabiya bihadarati al Arika. متسلحين بمبادئ الوسطية والاعتدال وحرية التدين والإخاء بين جميع الحضارات والأديان كلمة السيدة بيتسي ماثيسون النائب الثاني لرئيس مجلس الأمناء بمركز الملك حمد العالمي للتعايش السلمي Your Majesty, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen your Majesty, we stand before Your Majesty today with the deepest respect and pride. Respect for our beloved monarch and pride in all of Your Majesty's many achievements, which have seen the Kingdom of Bahrain recognized as a pioneer and world leader in so many areas. One of these areas of pioneering success is education. And as Bahrain celebrates the 100-year anniversary of the first form of school, not only in Bahrain, but in the region, Your Majesty has called for more focus on education in the digital age and on youth empowerment to ensure Bahrain continues to lead the way in education. In answer to Your Majesty's inspiring call, today we are humbled to present to Your Majesty the fruits of the hard work and cooperation between the King Hamid Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and This is Bahrain. Following on from the creation of the King Hamid Chair in Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence at Sapienza University in Rome, with its successful launch in 2018, and the first King Hamid Summer School in Rome in September this year, which saw young people from all around the world gather together to study Your Majesty's courageous and powerful words in the Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration. We present to Your Majesty today the first group of participants of the new King Hamid Faith and Leadership Fellows Programme. The King Hamid Faith and Leadership Fellows Programme is affiliated with both Oxford and Cambridge Universities and delivered by the United Kingdom's leading training organisation in this field, Faith in Leadership. Director and founder of Faith and Leadership, Mr. Krish Raval, has been awarded the Order of the British Empire Medal by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth for his dedication to education, and His Royal Highness Prince Charles endorses and encourages his organization's noble objectives. Your Majesty, over the course of one year, the participants progress through three modules taught here in Bahrain by visiting faculty from the United Kingdom. Participants are taught leadership skills that will enable them to excel in their studies, career, and throughout life as compassionate and caring individuals. Your Majesty, part of the pledge that King Hamid Fellows make is to give back to their country by mentoring other young people to share their knowledge and skills and to inspire others to embrace Your Majesty's vision. Your Majesty, since the launch of this first group of 20 participants of the King Hamid Faith and Leadership Fellows Program, they have already mentored other young people during our United Nations International Day of Tolerance celebrations with the participation of over 1,000 students. 
Your Majesty, we are proud to announce that we have been overwhelmed by the response from our young people. And we have now received over 1,300 applications from youth who are eager to embrace Your Majesty's vision and become King Hamid Faith in Leadership Fellows. So in response to this unprecedented demand, preparations are being made to rapidly expand the capacity and reach of the King Hamid Faith and Leadership Fellows Program and ensure that we leave no one behind in our quest to serve the dreams and aspirations of all of our young people. Your Majesty, it is often said that young people are our future, but we know that Your Majesty's philosophy is that young people are our now. And so we must empower them now with the skills, knowledge, and confidence to take their place on the world stage today. Your Majesty, the King Hamid Global Center, and this is Bahrain, stand behind Your Majesty in this regard. And we pledge to continue to work tirelessly to create world-class education opportunities for the youth of Bahrain that will enable them to shine and make Your Majesty proud of our youth and their achievements. Your Majesty, in the words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, a father gives his child nothing better than a good education. Your Majesty, as the father of our nation, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for this most precious gift for your sons and daughters. May Allah continue to bless Your Majesty and all Your Majesty's wise, honorable, and compassionate leadership endeavors for the Kingdom of Bahrain and her dear people. Thank you, sir. Deputy Prime Minister Hassan Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting and Secretary General Yasser Al Nasser delivered the following statement. The cabinet praised His Majesty's patronage of the fourth edition of the ISA Award for Service to Humanity, which reflects the Kingdom's keenness to achieve local and international humanitarian accomplishments and dedicate these accomplishments in the memory of the late Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa. The cabinet hailed the collective efforts that ensured the success of the award and congratulated the winner. On the occasion of the International Day of Tolerance, the Cabinet praised the accomplishments achieved during the era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in this regard. The Cabinet then highlighted the importance of the jewellery fair that is held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and stressed its role in enhancing the Kingdom's status globally and attracting global companies to participate. The Cabinet stressed the importance of the Manama Dialogue and its role in holding discussions regarding current challenges and exchange of opinions on various topics, as well as enhance regional and international cooperation, in addition to witness high-level participation in the fields of politics, economy and military. In this regard, the Cabinet welcomed the participants of the Manama Dialogue. The Cabinet approved the granting of the residence permit on personal sponsorship of the foreigner if his share of a partner in any financial, commercial, industrial, tourism or other economic or investment companies in a country is not less than 50,000 dinars instead of 100,000 dinars. The Council also approved a ministerial decision to amend some provisions of Resolution 74 of 2007 on the granting of a residence permit to foreigners. 
The Cabinet approved two draft laws regarding exemption of citizens of Thailand who come to the Kingdom for tourism from entry fees and addition of a Ukraine and Serbia to the list of countries whose nationals are allowed to obtain an electronic visa to enter the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Cabinet decided to classify 22 Iranian military and economic entities and six Iranian individuals as terrorist entities and to include them in the approved list of persons and bodies supporting terrorism. The Cabinet instructed the relevant regulatory authorities and jurisdiction to take the necessary measures in light of the memorandum submitted for this purpose by the Minister of Foreign Affairs. The Cabinet approved an MOU between Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa Academy for Diplomatic Studies and the Diplomatic Academy of the Foreign Ministry of Serbia. The MOU aims to enhance the cooperation between the two acad ac academies in exchange of expertise. The Cabinet discussed two memorandums regarding enhancing cooperation with the Representatives Council and referred them to Ministerial Committee for Legislative and Legal Affairs. The Cabinet approved the acquisition of real estate for the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning for road expansion projects in Gorefa and for Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities for textile factory project in Bani Jamra. The Cabinet also approved our services agreement with Spain and referred the draft law to the Representatives Council. The Cabinet referred to the Ministerial Committee for Legislative and Legal Affairs, the MOU between the National Space Science Authority and Russian Space Agency. The Cabinet then reviewed a report by the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism on the results of the world travel market that was held recently in London. On behalf of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa inaugurated the World Jewelry Federation Conference, SIBJO, which is organised and supervised by Danat in the presence of the Deputy Prime Minister, Jawad Al Arayed, and a number of invited guests and experts. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for patronising the event, which reflects his keenness towards the field of jewellery. He added that the event gathers people who discuss the challenges of making jewelleries, in addition to updating their approved international references for the classification of diamonds, stones, pearls, metals and corals, and references of gemstone laboratories and mining standards, according to international standards. He said that this event aims to develop the pearl and gemstone industry thanks to the Kingdom's rich history in this field. The event comes in line with the launch of the 28th edition of the Jewellery Arabia 2019 that will be held tomorrow, which affirms the status of the Kingdom in this field on the regional and international levels. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah praised the support of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, as well as the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He also praised the role of Danat in providing pearl inspection services and ensuring the nature of its formation by providing this institute with a laboratory with high specifications, containing the latest advanced equipment in the field of inspection and international and local expertise, worked in the best institutes and major laboratories. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah wished this conference success as well as support to the pearl and jewellery industry in the Kingdom of Bahrain and the world. SIBJO, the World Jewelry Confederation's 2019 Annual Congress, organized by Bahrain Institute for Pearls and Gemstones, Danat, gathers gem and jewelry industry experts from around the world in Bahrain, the home to pearling industry dating back to at least the 3rd century BC, which remains to this day the world's preeminent producer of natural pearls. Danat has established a leadership position in pearling in both uh, looking at the varieties of pearls and the rating of pearls. So for Danat to host this event in the Kingdom of Bahrain allows Danat to establish a leadership position uh, in, in the pearling industry. And in natural pearls, this was the objective of setting up Danat. Bahrain has had, uh, I would say, more than decade centuries of leadership in, in pearling, and it was time that we showcase that leadership and that heritage and history. The cause of having Danat to be the examination center for the quality of the pearls is something that we need to show the world. The reviving of the pearl industry is a project Bahrain all dedicated to work on. Pearl uh, revival initiatives is very important for Bahrain. Uh, the uh, objectives of it is to, um, to strengthen Bahrain uh, as a center for uh, pearl industry 
and to regulate the uh, the uh, uh, fishing and diving uh, business in Bahrain. But we have a story to tell here. We have been uh, a trading nation for a very long time. SIVJO annual meetings are where amendments to the organization's international industry standards for diamonds, colored stones, pearls, gem labs and much more can be introduced. SIVJO is the global organization that brings together the greatest players in the jewelry industry from jewelers, technicians, um, associations from around the globe to discuss all the key relevant issues uh, that impact the industry. We wanted to capitalize on this me annual meeting by hosting it in Bahrain to launch the, re the Pearl Revival Initiative on an international level. We want the international community to know that natural pearls have not gone in extinct and that there is a thriving pearling industry in Bahrain and we actually want to take it to the next level. Sibjo is a really global um, organization and it has a mission statement which is very dear to me, which is consumer confidence in jewelry products and also sustainability and honesty and transparency in everything that the jewelry industry does from mine to consumer. SEBJO 2019 is an opportunity for Danat to showcase to the world how Bahrain blends its millennia-old legacy and tradition with cutting-edge technology and vision for the future. Bahrain welcomes delegates from around the world as Danat organizes SIBDU 2019, the official gathering of the World Jewelry Confederation's Assembly of Delegates, shedding light this year on natural pearls and their importance. Hiva Abdul Ghaffar, Bahrain International. Shura Council Chairman Ali Ben Salah Asale received former President of Bosnia and Herzegovina Hara Salajdik. During the meeting, the Shura chairman lauded the developing bilateral relations and cooperation linking the two countries in all fields. He asserted keenness on enhancing and developing these ties to broader horizons to achieve the joint interests of the two countries and the friendly peoples, mainly in the legislative field. The Shura Council chairman stressed that the reform project of His Majesty the King has opened new horizons to relations with the different world countries. For his part, the former president here the development and progress of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King, noting the kingdom's initiatives in adopting dialogue, tolerance and peace with all religions, civilizations and sects, setting a pioneering international model in this field. The King Habit Centre for Peaceful Coexistence has organised a dinner and art exhibition in honour of the former President of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Haris Salajdik, and the High Representative of the UN Alliance of Civilizations, Miguel Angel Moratinos. The event was attended by a number of officials. We are coming from another country, so we are foreigners here. So as foreigners, what do we see is the most important thing, the most noticeable thing in Bahrain. That is why I, what I call the Bahraini smile. And that is, and, and, and that the spiritual uh, comfort that people feel here. And that is the biggest success of this leadership. As a high representative of the United Nations Alliance of Civilization, it's for me a great privilege, a great honor to take part in this uh, initiative, trying to work together with Bahrain, trying to promote in the youth how we can really eliminate uh, violent extremism, radicalism, by understanding each other, and try to share with others mutual respect and mutual understanding. We are celebrating this year uh, 100 years of, uh, <coughs> of uh, starting uh, schooling, uh, regular schooling in Bahrain since uh, 1919. Uh, these schools since, that, since the beginning. Adding to that, that the society with uh, this openness and this uh, you know, peaceful coexistence and tolerance have force the, the, the private schools. I was honored and very pleased to have been invited uh, to attend this uh, very colorful, very successful conference. Of course, in Bahrain, uh, 
the land of peace, the land of happiness, the land of prosperity. Everybody here is everybody's friends, especially the Bahrainis, who welcome everybody to this land. Of all religions, Christians, Jews, Hindus, of course Muslims. The eighth edition of the MENA Angel Investor Summit was held today in Bahrain, gathering 160 participating countries to show that Bahrain is a leading destination for innovation and entrepreneurial success. The event is organised by Tenmo, the first ever Bahrain Angels company in the kingdom and the organisers of the MENA Angel Investor Summit in collaboration with Tamkeen. The summit is part of the forthcoming Global Entrepreneurship Week 2019 that gathers the Kingdom's entrepreneurs community from around the world to participate in an array of exciting events and activities. Around other attractions, the summit will include 30 of the region's best startups stepping up to pitch the products and business models to investors. Tenmo, our 8th MENA Angel Investment uh, Summit. We've been doing it for the past 8 years. Thank you to our sponsors. These events are shaping the, the startup ecosystem, uh, corporates and uh, government such as Samkeen, EDB, Bahrain Development Bank. All this support is coming together to support the startup ecosystem. So you have um, investors over here, you have startups, you have corporates, all of them are connecting and networking together to make it happen and hopefully we're going to see deal, uh, deals happening today. Under the patronage of the Council of Representatives Speaker Fasia Zanal, the Youth Leadership Association organised yesterday evening the closing ceremony of the Parliamentary Youth Programme within the activities of the 5th edition of the Parliamentary Forum for Youth. On behalf of the Council of Representatives Speaker, Chairman of the Committee of Youth and Sports, MP Abdullah bin Ibrahim al Dosuri, highlighted the importance of the programme, which opens the way for communication between youth and the Legislative Council to communicate their ideas and suggestions. Ahmed al Dozi, General Coordinator of the Youth Parliamentary Programme, said the programme includes training courses and workshops by local and international trainers in the presence of MPs, as well as a programme delegation visit to the UK to learn about best practices in civil society organisations there. 150 youngsters participated in the programme and put forward three proposals. The right of access to public information law, the proposal to establish the Youth Advisory Council and the mechanisms of linking the outputs of the educational process with the labour market with the participation of members of the Shura and Representatives Councils and specialists within an open dialogue. We are supporting for the young generation, for the work for everything from the information for the parliament. And uh, the young people now on the Bahrain have to know about the uh, information about the parliament, or how they work in the parliament inside Bahrain. We are supporting now around maybe four or five years for this program. Throughout the program, I learned new things. I saw new things. I participated in new activities. We attended different uh, workshops, different roundtable sessions, discussions, debates, different types of activities. When you hear about the name, the young parliamentarian, you think that it is related to more related to the politics aspect of it. But in reality, it's more than that. Um, they'll teach you from leadership and management, negotiation and conflict resolution, protocols and etiquettes, and how to handle international protocols and etiquettes. I want to be an MP, to be the voice of the youth, and to help to uh, apply my skills and what I've learned to, to be a good futurist. And I hope this uh, program will be the gateway of the better future of Bahrain.